Hey, good evening, everybody. I, I just thought I'd share something with you tonight. That, uh, this was a real blessing. Uh, it's a it's a Sunday night, and I was visiting at uh, the Hope Center in Axton, Virginia tonight. Um, it's a Christian rehab uh, for those who are, you know, wanting to come out of addictions to various drugs, alcohol, and uh, turn their lives around and, you know, connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of them are doing extremely well, and it's just a very blessed place to, to go to. And so tonight, um, I was out there with um, several of the teenage boys that we bring along with uh, from the Anchor House. And, uh, and uh, on Sunday night, they have this thing called a daily review. And all 30 guys gather in the, in the cafeteria there and, and, and each take a turn if they'd like to, to just share a little bit about their day and some of the things that the Lord is doing in their life. And, um, you know, um, it's really special to attend these daily review sessions because the guys really share from their heart. And it, it's just, you can sense the presence of the Lord because God is really working in these men. Um, so uh, tonight... Um, all of the fellas sharing, you know, was meaningful uh, and, you know, blessed, but uh, several really stood out. Uh, one was a young man who suffered painful loss of his marriage. He, he's not an older guy. He's, he's a young guy. He's, I think he's just 21. And uh, he's been really working hard at his work therapy, one of the companies that he's working at. And But it just, it's he's gone through a painful loss of his marriage, and he has two very young sons. And those two young sons just really keep him going on visitation days. His sons just really love him and look up to him. And that's kind of what keeps him going uh, right now because of, of the discouragement of losing his marriage. But, uh, you know, we shared with him Joel chapter 2, verse 25. It says that God can restore the years that the locust has eaten. It's a great verse of encouragement in the Bible that says that, you know, even though you may have lost years, uh, through a devastating time in your life or somebody you know may have lost years. Like when locust plagues would break out, they eat everything green and all is lost. There's no harvest. People starve. Uh, a plague of locusts in some parts of the world can be a huge devastation. So, But God can restore the years that the locusts have eaten, the Bible says. And so we've got to encourage this guy, you know, that you know somehow or another God can re restore the years that he's lost. He's on the right track. He's sober. He's following the Lord. He's doing a whole lot better. Um, Proverbs 17, 6. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. That's why these little boys really look up to their dad, even despite that he had a past of some drug involvement and had some loss and stuff. But they just really, really look up to him. They love him, and that's what keeps him going. I believe he's going to make it. Another man shared how um, he has been given uh, a job at one of the companies where the guys work that is far below his skill level and his interest level, and uh, but yet he's doing it with a good attitude. And uh, he really reminded me of this Russian friend of mine named Sergei who came to uh, a Bible school up in New York, um, not speaking hardly any English. He was a skilled mechanic from the uh, Soviet Army, um, strong Christian, arrives at the Bible school, great, you know, like say mechanical skill and ability and all that. And, and the job that he got was with an old rickety old vacuum, just vacuuming in the hallways, you know. But he was smiling one day and just running his vacuum and said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. You know, he had a great attitude and he was willing to do a menial task, you know, with just a super attitude. I loved him. And God really prospered him. He went on to sell cars and, and have his own little dealership and had a wonderful family. He's now a pastor. Uh, just a great guy, you know, super guy. Uh, so anyway, um, another guy shared how his beloved younger sister, uh, who is a pharmacist and, you know, a really, really great gal, Christian gal, but she suffered breast cancer. You know, even while she was pregnant, she had to have a breast removed, and it was just really hard. And now they found another lump, and and so he's really asking the guys to pray for her because he really loves her dearly. So, and the guys really promised to pray for her. Um, the most meaningful one to me 
was a guy who shared that for the first time he's been experiencing true contentment. You know, he's been sober now for probably close to a year, doing great on his job, but he had still been experiencing that restlessness um, and uh, until now. And he's finally been experiencing some real contentment. Just, you know, having a visitation with his family the other day, he realized that he didn't want to get up and go do something or even go get high or something like he used to. He always felt like he had to go do something. And he wasn't content, but now he's experiencing that contentment. And, uh, you know, I remember one time Warren Wiersbe uh, quote, uh, gave a quote that was really good. He said, man's greatest burden is to please himself. So think about that, you know, anybody who is just out there and, and living to try to please themselves and, and find true contentment by pleasing themselves, it eludes them, you know, no matter what you try, you might try travel, you might try money, you might try, you know, sex, whatever you're going to try, and um, material things, and that contentment will elude you, it always will. Man's greatest burden is to please himself. And now he's experiencing that through Christ, and, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, you're really a wealthy person if you've found that contentment, no matter your income level. You know, I heard this old song one time, I want to share it with you. I, I really don't know who wrote it. It's called Restless Soul. Restless soul, how you climb, how you search for peace of mind. Look above this world of woe. Seek the Lord, seek the Lord, thy restless soul. Well, sometimes I feel so lonesome and restless deep inside. My heart hears a warning to seek the Lord and feel Him by my side. Restless soul, how you climb, how you search for peace of mind. Look above this world of woe. Seek the Lord, seek the Lord, thy restless soul. God made man for his glory to serve him and be free and I know my heart hears a warning when I feel this restlessness inside of me restless soul how you climb how you search for peace of mind Look above this world of woe. Seek the Lord, seek the Lord, thy restless soul. Seek the Lord, seek the Lord, thy restless soul. Amen. I believe there's a verse in Jeremiah chapter 29, somewhere around verse 12 or 13, somewhere in there. It says, and you will seek me and you will find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. You know, when Trudy left in 1978 to go back to Hawaii, I found myself all alone in Alaska. I didn't know if I'd ever see her again. You know, basically felt like I had lost everything once again. And uh, something very, very amazing happened. Um, I actually began to experience contentment and peace for the first time in my life. And it was just simply because I I asked the Lord to come into my heart. 
I realized I was a total mess. I was a sinner. I, I was separate from him. And I needed him. I needed him to come into my life. And, you know, I started to experience contentment. It was a miracle. It was the first time I'd ever felt that in my entire life. I didn't have to go hit the bars, go get drunk. I didn't have to do that anymore. Um, you know, I was just content to be by myself. And I knew I had him and he had me. And life began to really change. And, you know, long story short, he put us back together. And we've tried to dedicate our life to Jesus uh, since that time in 1978. And, and what a difference he's made. So seek the Lord, thy restless soul. God bless you.